One of the most misunderstood verses in the Quran until now is chapter 51 verse 56. The only purpose of the life of humans and jinn is worship. People think that according to this verse, we should be praying and fasting all the time, which is absolutely wrong. This is why it's very important to understand what is worship. And this is the title of this video, so stay tuned. In the first episode of the Sharia law, we talked about Tawheed and how Tawheed paves the way to worship. So now if I understand that my purpose of life is worship, I need to know what worship is because I don't want to turn into a monk. Actually, turning into a monk is a bad thing. Check this verse in the Quran, for example. This is God commenting on some Christians turning into monks. He's saying they are doing it for my sake, but I didn't ask them to do that. We also learn from this hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when some of the disciples misunderstood the concept of worship, they were saying we're trying to be as good as we can. One of them said, I fast all the time. I never stop fasting. The other said, I pray all the night. I never sleep. And the third one said, I don't touch women. I never get married. And when the Prophet, peace be upon him, knew about these people, he said, I know God better than you. I fear God more than you. But I fast and I stop fasting. I pray the night and I sleep. And I get married. فمن رغب عن سنتي فليس مني. And whoever is not doing my sunnah, whoever is not learning from my teachings, is not from my ummah. And some people get confused even more because they think we should do the opposite. We should like pursue career and money and wealth and happiness and women and you know the American dream. And this is also absolutely wrong. And God is referring to these people in verses like this. God wants to accept your repentance and wants people who follow their desires to make a huge U-turn. Can't you see the one who took his desires as his own God? He considered his desires to be his God. Then what should we do? Being a monk is wrong and following our desires is also wrong. And the answer is balance. Do you know the word Bismillah? The word that every Muslim on earth is using like 100 times per day, maybe more uses it in his prayers, uses it before he starts work, before he eats, before anything. Do you know what it means? The literal translation is in the name of God. Think about like a historical movie and you know there is an army coming to invade part of India and they're saying we're coming here in the name of the queen to steal your wealth. So the Indian guy is like, why are you coming to steal my wealth? And the soldier is responding, I am here in the name of the queen. So what does the word in the name of means? It means that this is the reason behind my action. So if I'm saying, for example, I will do this task, Bismillah, it means that the only reason I'm doing this task is to please God. There is no other reasons in my heart. This is the real meaning of Bismillah. And this is literally the difference, the whole difference between a believer and a hypocrite. If I am going to do my prayers, for example, to please God, I'm doing it only for the sake of God, I would start with Bismillah. But if I'm a hypocrite and I'm praying only for the sake of people because I want people around me to notice that I'm praying, I can't really say Bismillah. I say in the name of people. This is why you have verses like, for example, chapter 107, verse 4 to 6. Woe to those who pray, who are headless of their prayers, who are making a show of their deeds. They're not really doing the prayers for God, they're doing it for the people. We can also see that in chapter Al-Hadid 57, verse 12 and 13. This chapter is describing people on the Sirat. The Sirat, if, you, if you're not familiar with, is a bridge over hellfire that everyone will pass on to enter paradise, to enter eternal happiness. So this bridge is thinner than a wire and sharper than a sword. No way you can pass it except with the mercy of God. And you have the believers passing the bridge and they have lights that is helping them pass. And you have the hypocrites behind them without lights. And they are asking, why don't we have lights? Believers, wait for us so we can share your lights. And it was said to them, no, go find your own lights. Don't take the lights of the believers. And they're like, but we're, we're afraid we're gonna fall into hell. We don't have light, I can't see. The bridge is so thin, I will fall. Then a wall is made between them, and this wall has a door, and this door written on it, torture, 
but if you open it, you find mercy. The door here represents making the decision of being a good person in this life. Written on it, torture, because it seems hard. But if you open it, you will find mercy. If you become a good person, you will see how happy you will become. So if you didn't open this door in this life, you cannot open this door in the hereafter. Anyway, the point is what? يُنَادُونَهُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ They call the believers from behind the wall because you know what? They're afraid to open the door. Weren't, weren't we together? Weren't we living the same life? قَالُوا بَلَى They say yes, we were together. So weren't we studying the same subjects in school and in university? Weren't we going to the same jobs, taking the same salaries, going to the same gym, sleeping on the same beds? We were together. Why is there a wall between us now? We literally had the same life as you. And the answer is Bismillah. Apply Bismillah to every aspect of life. Let's go example by example. Why are you studying? Oh, I'm studying because in the future I want to have a good career so I can become rich and happy. Uh, so it is in the name of money. But however, the believer was studying because God ordered us to educate ourselves. So I'm studying Bismillah. Why are you working? Because you know I want to be successful and rich and be proud of myself. Okay, so it is in the name of pride. But the believer is working because doing good in your work is a kind of worship. So the believer was working Bismillah. Why are you going to the gym? I was going to the gym because I want to have six packs and take pictures and put it on Instagram to impress the girls. But the believer was going to the gym Bismillah because God said that your health is a trust and you should preserve it and you should preserve your body in a healthy condition. So we were doing the same things but for completely different reasons. And the only difference between us is one word, Bismillah. So to sum up, worship is not only fasting and prayer. Worship is living life to the fullest by the laws of God for the purpose of pleasing God. So to a believer, everything he is doing is worship. Eating is worship because he says, Bismillah, I am eating to have energy, to have enough calories, to live by the rules of God for six more hours. So, eating is a good deed. Why are you sleeping? I'm sleeping Bismillah, because I need to rest my body so I can worship God tomorrow, so every breath in his sleep is a good deed. Imagine going on the Day of Judgment, looking at your record, and you have good deeds. What did you do? Slept. What did you do? Eat. So, when you were eating, if I ask you, why are you eating now? Will you say, because I'm hungry? Then it is in the name of hunger. If you say, because the food is delicious, then it is in the name of delicious food. But if you say, Bismillah, in the name of God, then it is a good deed. Again, this is the only difference between a good deed and a nothing deed. And this is the difference between a real believer and a hypocrite. Bismillah. Check this verse, for example. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ some people, they consider other things equivalent to God in love. But the believers, they love God more. This verse is not talking about only idol worship. Someone worships his desires. Someone worships cigarettes or alcohol or food or women or money. But the believers, they love God more. Even though they love money, but they love God more. So when they are presented with a choice between pleasing God or taking a bribe, they love God more. And this very deep faith that results into us living our whole life just in the name of God comes over time. It doesn't come when you say, oh, I'm Muslim now. No. Even God himself said, When the Arabs said, we believe now, tell them, no, you didn't believe. You're just Muslims. You just accepted Islam. Faith will come later. Because faith doesn't come when you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Faith comes over time. It grows over time. The more you strive, the more you work on yourself, the more you do good deeds, faith becomes stronger in your heart. And then you become a believer. Now you're just a Muslim. See the difference? Before I end, I want to read two hadith with you that will clarify this matter greatly. First one is from the book Riyadh al-Salihin 407 and it is Sahih Hadith. 
It says that on the day of judgment, every one of us will be asked about four things. First thing is he will be asked about his life. How did he consume it? Literally every second of his life. Imagine. Remember on 2018, like on this Tuesday at 5 p.m., what did you do in this minute and why? Imagine being asked about every second of your life. And the question is not only about what you did, it is also about what you didn't. As we learned from Quran 7513, It's about what you did and what you didn't. So what did you do in this one minute? Why did you do it? And why didn't you do something else? Think about that every second of your life. And then number two, he will be asked about his knowledge. Why was this knowledge important? And what did you do with it? The Prophet, peace be upon him, was always saying, I seek refuge in you, God, from knowledge that is worthless. Think about all the clickbaits and all the videos that we wasted our life on. Think about all the tips and tricks on how to win in games or how to pick up girls that you wasted your teenage life on. He will be asked on every knowledge that he gained. Why did you gain it and how did you use it? Was it real knowledge? Did you benefit mankind with it? Or was it worthless knowledge? Then number three, he will be asked about his money. Where did you get it from and how did you spend it? So did you get it from a good way or did you committing business fraud, legal business fraud, right? Did you actually work as an employee or were you on social media or time pretending to work and getting salary? Where did you get it from? And how did you spend it? Did you spend all of it on like cigarettes and fast foods that will ruin your health and useless stuff? Or did you spend it in a good way? And also, did you use at least some of it to help the needy and the poor or not? And finally, number four, he will be asked about his health. How did you ruin your health? Did you ruin it in alcohol addiction and smoking and fast food and stuff? Or did you ruin it in a good way striving in the name of God, helping mankind, making the world a better place. Because you're gonna lose your health anyway. But why did you lose it makes a huge difference. The last hadith I wanna share with you is uh, this one in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 6632. It was a part of a conversation between Umar ibn al-Khattab, may God be pleased with him, and the Prophet peace be upon him. The Prophet was teaching people that my teachings should be more beloved to you than yourselves. Beloved means what? Means that if you're presented with a desire that will benefit yourself or my teachings, you choose my teachings over your own desires. So you love me more than you love yourselves. And then Umar ibn Khattab responded, he said, you know what, Prophet Muhammad, I love you more than everything but myself. And the Prophet said, لا يا عمر. No, Umar, it doesn't count until it is more than yourself. And in the end of the conversation, Omar thought about it and he said, I swear by God more than myself. If you're presented with a choice to either please yourself, please your own desires, or follow the teachings of the Prophet, you choose the teachings of the Prophet. And this finally clarifies what does it mean to worship God every second of your life. In the next episode, we're going to start to talk about the details of the Sharia law, the do's and don'ts. Do this and don't do that. It will be very interesting and it will be very important. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss it. And Muslims, brothers and sisters, if you want to support our Dawah project and help spread the words of God, this is how the YouTube algorithm works. The more you engage with the video with likes, comments, shares and whatever, the more it will be recommended to other people. So help us out and share the reward, inshallah. And if you want to support us financially, we will leave donation links under the video. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.